Hey, we have the official U.S. PlayStation Magazine demo disc number 65. One of the PlayStation 2 demo discs, obviously. So we're going to jump right into the playground like we always do. And typically I end up splitting these PS2 demo discs up into two separate episodes because there's just so damn much content on these things that it's too much for one episode. I used to be a ranger. I kept the what in the galactic is this? Oh, froze. Oh my god, it's bugged. <laughs> Why? I wanted to see this video, whatever the fuck it was. Especially the um, the debug information in the top right of the screen. Let's, uh... Oh my god. Uh, hold on, let me... Let me start this over again. <laughs> Play the disc. Fuck. Oh, I'm in the BIOS menu. Come on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I should probably edit this stuff out, but I guess I'm not going to. <laughs> if you're seeing this, I guess I didn't. You didn't load the disc. What are you doing? <laughs> Fuck, what? Reset. Reset. No, it's going to go in, go in the BIOS again. Oh, nope, it loaded the disk. <laughs> Let's give that one more try. Get the cursor out of there. I'm running this off of, I used to go and take the um, the disc and I used to rip it on my hard disk and then load it from there. But recently I've been running it off, directly off of the disc and that might be the problem that we're looking at here. So let's see if we can get this. Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter. I used to be a ranger. I kept the peace in the galactic frontier. But the corporations got greedy for land. And turn the galaxy into a battlefield. The space shooter. I stood against them to defend the headless. They killed my squad. Framed me. Brought me away for ten long There are years. demos to this on this disc. I do not remember this game. Letting me go. Like at all. I mean, I don't. I mean, as I've I've mentioned a thousand times before. There was a time where I would play every demo disc I got to death, whether I liked the games on it or not, because money was expensive, and when I got a new demo disc, it's all that I would have for a while. So I'd play them over and over again. Eventually, though, it got to the point where like, I had a large enough game library and a large enough demo disc library that I didn't need to latch onto every disc so Vindy did this latch on every disc and play them eternally but, if, but when the PlayStation 2 launched I went back into that because PlayStation 2 games were all new and expensive and I didn't have many but I think probably by this point I wasn't like stuck playing every game over and over again so ATV 2 quad racing huh? Uh, once again I did not read the instructions <laughs> I have to figure it out as I go Coming February 2003, so this was three years into the PlayStation 2's life cycle. I did not get a launch PS2. I had saved up my money for like the year and a half <laughs> prior to it. I wasn't, uh, as a kid, I didn't get any kind of an allowance or anything like that. Like I would, like uh, I would do my chores and stuff like that, but I wouldn't be given. I wouldn't be paid for it. I guess. Um, I'm not sure how I ended up getting money to get any games, but I mean, I got I would get some money, I guess, from birthdays or something like that, and I'd just save it. And I think it was like a year and a half or so that I saved up my money to get a PlayStation 2. And I wasn't able to get a launch PS2. I think I maybe got one six months or so after launch. So it was a fairly early PS2 owner, but not like an early early PS2 owner. 
So by 2003, I was probably, I'd probably owned a PS2 for a couple of years. Did this freeze on me? I'm seeing like a weird blink, like we're looking at a command prompt. Oh, it's reading. Okay. Tramp stamp on the girl in front of me. And, of course, X accelerates instead of a trigger button. I wonder if this emulator emulates the pressure-sensitive feature, which I'm using a DualSense controller, so the face buttons aren't, uh, aren't pressure-sensitive. I mean, not that the pressure-sensitive features in the PlayStation 2 were used very frequently. There were a few games here and there, like racing games. Or like, I remember the game Evergrace said, uh, stupid FromSoft RPG had pressure-sensitive for the attacks, but, like, you really, you just wanted to launch a full strength attack every time anyway. So, what was the point? Oh, shit! He just dethroned you off of that quad. I guess this game looks alright. I am playing it at a much higher resolution than the game was actually rendered. PS2, a lot of games were like 640 by 480 or uh, something like that. I'm sure there are multiple resolution models that you could have in the game, but that's like just the general resolution that you see at that era. Uh, I'm playing this, it's rendered in, in 4K, actually. But it's not a widescreen game, so there are black bars on either side. And it's being captured in 1920 by 1080, so you are seeing it at a much higher resolution than the game actually was. But I mean, it looks alright. It doesn't have a whole lot of detail, but at a resolution like that, uh, 640 by 480, high detail isn't like isn't, like, absolutely required. Plus, it, it is a 2003-era game on the console. It came out in 2000. But, I mean, this game looks alright. It's a shame there were no Jet Moto games on the PlayStation 2. Sony had so many intellectual properties. I think Jet Moto was owned by Sony. It was a single-track game. So it could have been Sony. They had so many IPs that just abandoned. Like, Jet Moto would have done so well on the PS2. Because, like, look at this kind of environment you have here. And then you have the Jet Moto could um, go over land and water and all that kind of stuff. And it just feels like it would have worked so well on the PS2. They could have carried that forward. But Sony was all about experimentation at the time. They didn't just rehash the same series over and over again like they tend to do nowadays. Like, oh, when's the next God of War come out? When's the next uh, Last of Us? When's the next some whatever? They they did their games for a little while, so I was ranked third. Sandy Perks, I guess these are all women? Anyway, they did a lot more experimentation back up until the PlayStation 3 era experimentation sort of died off and we were faced more with a uh, more conservative conservative Sony that we're looking at now let me get a save state at the menu so I can get back to here if I need to black and bruised looks like a boxing game she did not read the instructions once again the controls <laughs> Majesco. I haven't heard that name in a little while. Digital fiction. Never heard of that. They are the strongest, fastest, most ruthless fighters the world has ever seen. Drawn to the thrill of raw combat, they've sworn to challenge any condition. So it's like ready to rumble? In any arena, at any time. Theirs is a story of love, of tragedy, and of triumph. A little goofy. Ready to rumble was goofy. Urban gladiators, there can only be one champion, in one way, in or out of the ring. And that's... 
punching people in the dark. It feels like a lot of these sort of weirder boxing games were always just sort of taking after uh, Punch Out, the Nintendo series. Of course, uh, I mean, uh, the original Punch Out, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, was a game I was a huge fan of. And I played Super Punch Out after that. But after that, I just sort of fell off of the series. There weren't many of them after that, I don't think. But you saw these not quite realistic boxing games come out, like Ready to Rumble. I think that was a PlayStation 1 game, but what was that? Oh, I only have these two to choose from. I didn't read any of their names. Punch right, punch left. Special punch right. Oh yeah, weight classes be damned. He's shorter than her. Mickey McFist, Holly Vixen. Gotta work Ireland? I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Jersey City, New Jersey. 12, 3, and 9. 12, 0, and 9. A lot of draws. <laughs> Ride hard, live free, kick ass. Ah, it's cell shaded. Oh my god, look at the faces of the freaks behind her. Oh my god. They're very low poly you models. You find Dave and ask again. Very low poly models, and you really shouldn't use vertex animations when a model is that low polygon. I guess they're in the background, so there's not much of a focus on them. And the original game would have had lower resolution to not make them so visible, but... Okay, so you can block. Alright, I do not know how to play this game. Oh, he's on fire! Fuck! And down she goes. Get up! Wrenches. <laughs> get up! I don't know how to do that. Let's get up! She's got a very... Her right hand is weirdly wristy. There's no, like, stamina mechanic, it looks like. How do I block midsection? And down she goes. Get up! Look, look at this, it's like a hammer blow. <laughs> Can't you jab? <laughs> ah, it's gotta be it. Oh, no, we're counting. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Look at this strike. I mean, I know it's not supposed to be realistic, but you could have done better than this. Ah, survived the round. These Irish eyes ain't smiling. Motor City Mama. You been drinking? <laughs> Her face is getting all weird and distorted, and down she goes. I don't think I'm getting up. Yeah, this is it. Alright, let's go. <laughs> Ratchet and Clank, it's a demo! Oh, yeah. So... Something I keep pointing out is that Ratchet and Clank, uh, the PlayStation 2, 
have marked a pretty significant change in the way that platformers were looked at across the console competition. Yeah, the N64, which for the most part was better suited for platforming, 3D platforming games. It was better suited for 3D platforming games compared to the PlayStation 1, which it's more uh, like limited control scheme without analog sticks in the default system. Uh, made controlling in a 3D environment more difficult. And the technology of being able to render a higher, uh, better draw distance was just better suited. Uh, made the N64 just better suited for platformer games. You had some uh, different examples. Like I thought that the Crash Bandicoot games were actually pretty good, although they were limited in a number of ways. Uh, can I get you with this? <laughs> ah, shit. It's been a long time since I played Ratchet and Clank. Fuck! <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> but the PlayStation 2 saw a pretty significant change. And not necessarily because of hardware, because the GameCube itself was a good system, good hardware and all that kind of stuff. But just the design, like the the um, technical constraints on the PlayStation hardware were essentially removed. And it allowed the developers like Insomniac and Naughty Dog and uh, whoever did, whoever did like Spyro, basically removed those restrictions. And they were um, very good developers. And they came out with some amazing games here. So you have, like, Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank are the two big ones that people tend to think of. But you also had, like, Sly Cooper. And there were Spyro games on the PS2, I think. <laughs> well, I didn't play any of them, but I, I'm pretty sure they existed. You know what, I think I played, played them for the... This series. Ratchet and Clank might have actually been a better game than Jack and Daxter. I am fucking this up pretty bad. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. It's been a long time since I played, uh... Since I played Jack and Daxter. Alright, there we go. This'll, this'll do it, right? Ah, oh, shit. Bitch. My boomstick. There we go. Controls could be a little tighter. They're just looking at it from a modern perspective where... Um, like, techniques and all that have evolved. Shouldn't be too hard on it. There we goes. Keep splitting up. I'm not going to do... I'm only going to try one more time. And then move on, because these episodes can get very long. Ah, shit. There we go. Is that a shark? <laughs> it left me alone. We're fine. <laughs> Look at the low detail textures and everything. That was one of the flaws the PlayStation 2 had, was it didn't... Oh, I got eaten. <laughs> it didn't have a lot of memory available in buffer and for the textures. So, particularly early on in the PS2, you had limited uh, texture sizes. Which is actually like a bit of a change in things, because the PlayStation 1 tended to have higher resolution textures than the N64 or the um, 
in some cases. Although the Saturn, not so much. The N64 definitely due to other technological limitations when it came to the design of the graphics hardware. And this, though, the PlayStation 2. I mean, it was being compared to the GameCube and the Xbox, which came out more than a year later and were and were like subject to technological evolution. So it makes sense the PlayStation 2 would have yeah, you know, let's just do this. Have less capabilities. Still outsold the competition quite significantly. So Dark Cloud 2. I never owned Dark Cloud 2. But I do recall people generally saying that it was a better game than the original. Now, I did own the original, and I played the original quite a bit, because I loved the... I mean, the dungeon diving stuff was alright, I guess, but, like, randomized environments and shit like that didn't really... It, it was alright, I guess, but it was repetitive. But the town building stuff, that's where Dark Cloud really really shined because they took advantage of the greater amount of memory the PlayStation 2 had to allow you to construct a town. Uh, you find pieces of the town in the dungeons and then you take it back to the surface and then you go and... What am I doing? Fuck something up. Take it back to the surface and it lets you build your town back up, but you can construct it any way you want. And although the NPCs had requests on what, where they wanted their houses placed and all that, you didn't actually have to do what they said. Or you just had to place it there once and they give you a reward and then you can move it to wherever you wanted. So it spent a lot of time just constructing towns any way I felt like. I thought that was fun. I mean, like, the kind of user-generated content that became much uh, more common and advanced in games like Minecraft later on, or what's that, that Sony game, um, oh god, I forget what it's called, but like you can model stuff in 3D. Dark Cloud 2, I'm assuming, had a lot of that same stuff, but by the time it came out, like as I said a hundred times over, games were expensive and I had to be very selective on what I got. So, if I... Like, would I get Dark Cloud 2, where it's maybe just an improved version of the Dark Cloud that I already had, or would I invest my money into a completely different game, and I would tend to go with a completely different game. So Dark Cloud 2 was something that I skipped over. Well, I must have played this demo at some point. I don't remember this at all. Going forward, I am going to have to rip the disc to the hard drive or the solid state drive or whatever I'm storing it on because reading it from the optical media isn't working that well in this emulator it seems like the like the disc is shutting down although the optical drive I have is faster than that what it would have been on the PS PlayStation 2 that should have resulted in faster performance there seems to be a bit of a lag like the disc is shutting down when it shouldn't be the operating system is probably saying, Hey, you're not being used. Turn off. And then when the game goes to try to load, it has to spin the disc back up. Like right now. Just did it just now. And that makes, uh, that introduces a lot of stalls. I'm just going to let it go for the rest of this video, though. What is this? What am I doing here? Oh, okay. I like the little little details that they put in these games to really differentiate them from the kinds of things you would have seen on the PlayStation 1. Like the ponytail of this character. It's long and it's animated. You didn't see much of that kind of thing in the PlayStation 1. Like, if you did, it was like very specialized circumstances, like... Uh, Lara Croft's ponytail in in um, Tomb Raider. It was like that, but of course it wasn't animated quite as well. It's the kind of thing that they... feels like they actually sort of got away from in the years that followed. 
You didn't see much in the way of hair animations. Hair tended to be static or stuck, or like if it was long hair like this, it would be rigged to the body instead of to the head, or rigged uh, not like free movement like that. So if you saw a character move, you'd see their head turn and the hair stretch out because like the end of the hair it would be like rigged to her back, which would look funny. But it seemed like something, um, what did I have to do? I didn't read it. Oh, all right. Jeez, she's strong. Guess I gotta throw this into here. Or not. Fuck, I don't know. Let's try that again. Or, I gotta go somewhere else. I don't know. I'm gonna do this again. That didn't work. Moving on. I'm hoping... Hoping I don't need to do something there. Stops with X button. Oh, this is some sort of a... Like a recovery item. But randomized in some way. Does this werewolf, floating werewolf, have a gun? <laughs> This seems similar to Dark Cloud 1 in the sense that this environment I'm in is probably procedurally generated. So if I were to return here or replay the game or something like that, the map might be might be different, but made out of the same building blocks. Yeah, procedural generation has its place. I mean, it does help to prevent you from just sort of getting so used to a game that you can just rush through it. But it does have a habit of making a lot of the environment seem samey. Like, if you look at the map over on the right side of the screen, it is made up of these sharp angles and these repetitive blocks. And it was a problem in the original game, and you feel that over and over again, where it just... Uh, after you progressed into the same dungeon six times, but it, it just shaped a little bit different. You tend to... It wears on you. Alright, I don't know which way I'm supposed to go. Uh, maybe that saw thing I picked up will help me get through the spider web, though. Oh, this is an unrevealed part of the map. And your crystal, fantastic. There was something else the original Dark Cloud had that I guess maybe might have found its way into this game, which was a weapon upgrade system where you got these crystals or diamonds or something, and you would insert them into your weapons. And you had the ability to consume one of your weapons in order to apply its, turn it into a crystal, and apply its stats to another, crystal, uh, another weapon. And the benefit of that was that the half of the stats would carry over into the crystal. So if you were judicious about the way you did this, you could carry your stats uh, strength of a weapon over into a new weapon and just continuously do that. How that didn't always work, though, <laughs> tend it could be a little bit frustrating, was an example where I had, oh, there's a sprint mechanic. Oh, and a first-person view. Oh, I can shoot magic. Uh, okay, I'm probably gonna end this soon. I had a problem, though, while playing the original game, though, was I was halfway through the game and I had been carrying over the same weapon over and over again, turning it into crystals and carrying it into the new one. But there's a... Um, what is it called? Um wear mechanic on your weapons, where if you use them too much, they break. And if they break, you they're gone. You simply can't use them anymore. You can't turn them into crystals, nothing. So I had invested so many resources into this one weapon. And I ran up against, like, a stone enemy. And I hit it, like, twice. And my weapon, which was in pretty good condition, just snapped in half. I'm like, shit, I lost everything. 
I might have... I... Oh, okay. All I had to do was kill the monsters. There was no, like, progression through. I didn't have any weapons. I, I, I might have reloaded the save. Alright, so... I guess you have to kill all the monsters and move on? I don't... I don't remember that being something I had to do in Dark Cloud 1, but it has been a long time since I played that game. I like this character design, though. Look at this. I mean, it's... Cell shaded. The original game wasn't cell shaded. It did kind of look cartoony, but it wasn't um, wasn't quite like this. There's a little bit more detail in this character model. Let's see if I can get the camera a little closer to her. Yeah, look at the. I mean, there's not a lot, a whole lot of geometry in her, but the textures are very clean. Little, little bit blurry. A little bit of a heavy filter applied, but the fact that like. Her shirt has a solid color applied to it. Doesn't look bad. This game actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's it's up because of the emulator. Oh, I have the saw, don't I? It's up because of the emulator, but I feel like it still would have looked good if um, playing this on original hardware. That tree doesn't look too good. <laughs> Oh, so this is how you do it. I didn't need to kill all the monsters, I just needed to... I just needed to uh, find the saw. Run like hell. Hunt or be hunted. Talk about a disappointment of a game. Holy shit. This is one that I was very excited for when I was first... Ooh, a Renderware game. <laughs> when it was first unveiled. I remember there was an issue of Next Generation Magazine that went into quite a bit of detail about this. And the game got delayed for a while. I mean, a while, as in the like the early 2000s concept of a while, where it was delayed for like a year instead of like seven years. <laughs> but it got delayed quite a bit. But at the time when it was first unveiled, it seemed like it had an enormous amount of promise, almost sort of like what the game Alien Isolation ended up being where you had these very few number of enormously overpowered monsters. And you had, a, you had to use stealth, and you had to construct weapons, and you had to do with other kind of stuff to try to survive. But then the game... Oh man, this is glitchy as fuck. <laughs> Look at that. How do I fire? Where, as the actual game comes out, and it doesn't look nearly as good as the pre-release footage, screenshots and this idea that they had where it was supposed to be like a small number of powerful enemies was gone and you're just getting you're just getting swarmed by these fucking things like it's Resident Evil 4 it's say it, if not for the glitches the game itself wouldn't look that bad it's got some nice lighting I mean it doesn't have real-time lighting in the sense of like a modern game or a ray traced or anything like that but it or even like a Silent Hill game, but it, it's not bad for what it is. And the game doesn't look terrible, but it also doesn't look as good as the demo footage I'd seen way back when. So I suspect that this game ran into some trouble during development, and it just sort of limped out the door in a state which is not, not very good. <laughs> I played this demo. I remember playing the demo, putting it in, getting through this, and I'm like, all right, I'm no longer excited about this game. And uh, I never looked back. It's probably the only time I ever played the demo. This controls very weirdly. It's not like a traditional third-person shooter. Not that they were that well standardized before, like, Resident Evil 4. But I'm following around the cameras behind my character here, and I lock on with the R1 button, and I fire with the X button, but it, this looks like it was welded shut. What do I gotta do? <laughs> but once you start firing, its controls get kind of weird. I guess it works, but it doesn't feel fun. I don't know where I'm going. 
and I don't have the patience to play a long time to figure it out. Like, the, the combat is a little bit brainless. Do I ever run out of ammo? Uh, the designs are very xenomorphy. Okay. <laughs> Do these things just sort of endlessly respawn, or is there going to be a way out? And plus, RHL, like, the game was supposed to be called Run Like Hell, and they ended up retitling it RHL, Run Like Hell, which just seems really stupid. There are a lot of games over the years that sort of get, um, get announced, and there's a lot of hype behind them, and then they end up sort of not, not hitting their release target, and when they do come out, nobody really cares. This was one of them. <laughs> anyway, you can get out. Death Jam Vendetta. Man, the wrestling games of this generation were so awesome. I don't I don't remember this one that well. I don't think I owned it. No, I didn't I definitely didn't own it. Um It's it was just a wrestling game with a bunch of hip hop artists and So I probably played it a few times, yes. the demo a few times. But the <laughs> Electronic guards. Used to be. Come on. You wanted oh, to was this a video? Known. You'd prove your worth as a street I fighter. I thought this was a demo. Hustler. We don't fight out in the Maybe I didn't play the game. Hey, it's got a waste management uh, to waste management garden, dumpster. So we've taken it underground. Inside. The wrestling games of this generation were so good. And I mean, people talk about how, like, No Mercy was the best wrestling game ever. I, well, I mean, maybe it was at the time. Like, you could argue that the SmackDown games and the PlayStation 1 were good as well. But once you got to the PlayStation 2 and you saw, like, the second or third SmackDown games, those games were just so good. Um, what's, uh... You want to take what's mine. You got called um, Here Comes the Pain, but I think, was ever. the best one, which wasn't the last one. But they had, like, the SmackDown vs. Raw Jeff games. Oh, okay, so this is a demo. Awesome. But, uh, like, I don't think any of them were particularly bad, except for maybe the first one on the PlayStation 2. Oh, that's Mad Red Man. I don't know who this guy is. Red Man it is. I do not like the looks of this fucker. So I'm hoping I punch him in the face. Wrestling games are hard to play if you don't know how to play them. <laughs> Working your way out with them. So, I'm gonna lose. But the... Wrestling was so popular at the time. Uh, from like 97, 96, 97 or so onward. With like the NWO and WCW and then like Steve Austin and The Rock and WWF. Wrestling got so popular. So it makes sense. Oh, God. <laughs> Crushing them with your Timberlands. <laughs> that you saw a lot of like wrestling stuff that wasn't even, like, part of the big promotions. Oh my god. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> the, the attack mechanics are so goofy. Wow. Okay. Right. Ah! <laughs> I like the low-res crowd. I guess maybe it wouldn't have been quite so obvious on the original PlayStation hard, uh, PlayStation 2 hardware. But some of the characters are 3D models, and some of them are just animated tile maps. And the difference is really obvious. <laughs> but, like I said, it probably wasn't that obvious in on the original hardware, where that environment would have been... would have been uh, low resolution and off in the distance. Although, the fact that the 
the 3D characters have more animation to them does make them, like, is another differentiation. And you have the, the dancers in the back. It's, looking at these characters, I'm focusing more on the characters in the crowd than I am on what's going on in the ring. I'm just bat and button mashing. Get in here, you fucker. Or I guess I'm coming out to get you. Can I vault over? Get out of the way, motherfucker! <laughs> I see the same girl twice, right next to each other, right next to her. Actually, she's out there three times, look at that. And then over on the right side, there's the same girl wearing a bikini top. But, uh, looking at these characters, they have almost like, um, almost like PlayStation 1 level de de design to them. Sharpshooter, holy shit. Am I winning? That's fucking nuts. More like the kind of uh, like level of geometry and design like uh, stuff that you would have seen in like Soul Reaver as opposed to a game with more detailed 3D uh, character models. Like the kind of humans that you saw in Soul Reaver looked like that with their weird blocky hands and shit like that. Of course, they're not like hero units, so you weren't meant to look at them a lot. In Soul Reaver, that was. And they had a lot less detail than you'd see on like Raziel or something. I saw the, the trailer for the remasters of the Legacy of Kane games, and like it so, looks to sort of be like what they did with the Tomb Raider games. They took the original game and just like, redid the graphics and some of the control schemes. Hopefully they did a little bit of a better job. A little bit of a better job than what was done on the Tomb Raider games, but I'm hesitantly uh, excited about it. Was that a penitent? <laughs> Alright, can I... How do I pin? Oh, one. Oh, I guess that's not it. <laughs> Demo time up. I won, <laughs> I guess I beat the shit out of them enough. NBA Shootout 2003. Not since NBA Jam have I given a shit about a basketball game. But we'll play this anyway. When it comes to sports games, I'm not too interested in the super simulation type. Because it tends to be slower. And I'm not that interested in the slow stuff. And that's for the Lakers. Definitely the Knicks. The environment looks pretty good. Look at that. Oh, look at the... the, the look at the arms. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna fuck this up. I, I do not have a chance in hell of winning. I don't know how to... I don't know the controls. I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't pay attention. I'm not even controlling the guy on guard. I like the texture is getting corrupted. All right, just shoot from here. Traveling? I, fuck! I did not travel. What am I looking at here? With those weird colors? It's not like. It's not like there were render targets in on the PlayStation 2. Was there like a kind of a palletized uh, texture format on the PlayStation 2? Like, I did not foul the guy. I didn't even touch him. Was there a palletized... Oh, I got fouled. <laughs> I don't, I don't shoot. <laughs> Dude, now I'm traveling. What the fuck? If there was a kind of palletized texture mapping set up on the PlayStation 2 like there was on the PlayStation 1, where color data wasn't retained in the textures themselves, and it was uh, like kept separate in order to reduce the size of the textures, 
then I can imagine an effect like this, a an artifact like this, where the palette data is getting corrupted while rendering the texture. But I'm not sure the PlayStation 2 did that. Alright, I am fucking this up bad. I don't even know where I... Oh, I was looking at the wrong guy. Well, I'm losing anyway. Personal foul, yes. Alright, jumping out. The Getaway! Oh, this is a demo I played a bunch of times. Even though I didn't think the game was actually all that good. I was sort of wowed by the technology of it. Because you had... You started to see more of the open world designs on the PlayStation 2, like Grand Theft Auto 3. I'm pretty sure this game was out after GTA 3. And GTA 3 felt like a revolutionary design in terms of gameplay, environment, sense of humor, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, what's with a bird, Harry? She's one of Charlie's but the PlayStation essence. 2, um, uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, did have this kind of simplistic ugliness to it. And the getaway was the game that sort of uh, got rid of a lot of the, those features, like it had a much more realistic art style, a much more refined art style in a lot of ways. This just looks better than Grand Theft Auto 3. It ditched much of the sense of humor, and its gameplay was very different. So it isn't really much like Grand Theft Auto 3 anyway, but it's sort of like easy to make the association. They're on their way down. And what are you looking Can I skip over this? It's like a Guy Ritchie movie. Good. British people everywhere. This game looked amazing for its day. Which is kind of an unfortunate thing to look at nowadays because things that tend to look, go for really like realistic art styles age the fastest on account of the fact that as technology progresses, something that looks realistic looks very unrealistic as time goes on. Whereas something that looks more artistic, like Grand Theft Auto, will not have such um, such a stigma applied to it because it was never designed to look real. And you may have more detail in a modern game, but it doesn't necessarily make them look that much worse. This, on the other hand, is supposed to look realistic, but like, look at the texture map on that brick wall. Terrible. The weird dead expressions on the characters' eyes, the... All that kind of stuff. Look at that fucking Sorry. stereo on his on his desk. Idiots. Bloody How come you stopped instead of chasing after the kid? Is she dead? I guess so. Leave your gun behind. Yeah, all right. Yeah, she's dead. Go 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 go! Don't worry, Suze. Get her boy back. Oh, she's not dead. Suze. Yeah, she's dead. Susie! Ah! Whoa, he just disappeared. So did she. <laughs> there was another feature that I thought was a little irritating was that the way that it guide it doesn't have a map. It guides you around the environment by having the turn signals. I'm going the wrong way down. The turn signals indicate which way you have to turn. Which isn't that... Uh, it's harder to see. <laughs> it's easier for me to follow the car, I guess. Oh, killed someone. This does have... I mean, I can say this does have some artistic merit to it. Of course, I mean, like I said before, higher resolution than the original game, so... On the PlayStation 2, so... There's that. <laughs> Oh, shit. Get back in there, bro. How do you reverse? No, that's not it. There we go. Triangle. This car is fucked up. <laughs> Maybe I should take another one. If I can. 
Sorry, pedestrians. I'm going to run you over. I guess what it really doesn't do for me that the Grand Theft Auto games do is the GTA games, to me, are mayhem simulators. They're not, like, you're not supposed to take them seriously. I guess I'll drive this thing. I'm on the wrong side of the car. <laughs> Thinking like an American. Man, I'm driving a hunk of shit here. They're supposed to be mayhem simulators, or at least that's what they are to me. So I jump into those games, and sure, they have missions, and they have storylines and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes I just want to go on a freaking rampage. And that's why a game like this doesn't really do it for me. Same thing for Watch Dogs. Look at this building in the middle, though. That's pretty cool. And uh, it, if I can't just terrorize... I lost the car. Fantastic. Let's try again, because there's a shooting mechanics that I want to check out. Don't crash the damn thing. I said not to crash the damn thing. So I think the shooting mechanics in this game were better than that of the Grand Theft Auto games until probably Grand Theft Auto 4. But that might just be my memory playing tricks on me. I might have to get there to... I mean, it was improved in San Andreas. Shit. I've busted my car up again. In the same spot, too. Well, it's still working. So let's... Motherfucker. Oh, shit. It's on fire. Alright, one more time. One more time. And if I don't get it, I'm skipping out of this demo. We're already at 52 minutes, and this is going on for a while. I don't know how many more demos or video. I haven't seen any videos yet. Ah, oh, sorry, bro. Should not have run into me like that. I guess there was something of a like, rise in popularity of the Guy Ritchie movies hey, okay. after uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels came out. And it's like, he has a lot of these movies about, like, British gangsters. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels comes out. That's moderately popular. Then you had, like, Snatched, which had a more um, mainstream appeal in the United States on account of Brad Pitt being in it. And after that, like, Guy Ritchie was just a popular uh, popular director. So, it makes sense that you'd see games like this. That I, I don't think Guy Ritchie had anything to do with this game. But it's sort of riding the wave of popularity of Guy Ritchie's success, I think. Uh, this is not easy. <laughs> this is not easy. <laughs> just stopped so I can get out and stop driving. Here we go again. At least the road's a little bit wider this time. This city is rather intricately designed. Look at this. Nice draw distance. From a t purely technical perspective, this game is quite impressive. flat tire. I'm not stopping and grabbing somebody's shitbox, so I'm going to stick with this. Assuming I can. <laughs> Which way did I go? They went left. Ah, oh, I'm here. What was all that about? That about. All right, let's start murdering. How do I? How do I draw the gun? Do I not have? No crosshairs or reticles. Oh, look at that! I just picked up the dude's gun.
something. Okay, you know what? Maybe I spoke too soon about how good the shooting mechanics were. <laughs> Although, Grand Theft Auto 3 and um, Vice City, the shooting mechanics were shit. Oh, good, we got an AK. Where are there was something they could do here when you took damage. You rested against a wall. Like, there's no, there's no overlay. There's no user interface on the screen. So you have no idea what your health is, how much ammunition you have, or anything like that. And you recover health by resting against a wall. And you determine how damaged you are by, like, the blood spots on your character. Shit. Who did that? Uh, you. Jesus Christ, dude. Catch the hint. Dude, my head's in the way. You're dead, right? So, I, like, look how, look how he's moving. This animation. It's so awesome. But you rest against a wall... And the blood spots disappear as you heal. Which is so weird, but genius at the same time. It's so stupid. No wonder you don't see something like this. Nowadays, you tend to, in like, especially in first-person shooters, have a mechanic where you take cover as you take damage. And if you stand in cover long enough not taking damage, you'll heal. Which I guess is something-ish. The, like similar ish to this but it's really just designed to make the games easier rather than the old doom approach of running over health packs the game froze right now this guy have a gun Get around the other side. Ah. why can't I have a freaking radical this game is difficult as fuck. There's no lock on either. I guess they wanted to. Oh, look at that soda or beer or something coming out. Dude, just. Alright, I'm done. That's enough of this. <laughs> soda coming out or beer or something coming out of those pallets. Nice little details. That game, very ambitious. Um, I'd say more ambitious than... They should have refined the gameplay a little bit more. They focused a lot on technology. Wow. Holy shit. Look at this. <laughs> Graphical glitches galore. Holy shit. Like, it's like individual vertices are being spawned way out of place. So the model is, like, stretched out in weird-ass ways. But it's not happening. It doesn't look like it's happening with the motorboat or the character model. It's... Can we pick up speed or something? What's happening? Oh, my God. The soundtrack. That's going to get this uh, flagged. Shit, this is awful. It's it's the environment geometry that's being stretched around. That is entertaining as fuck, but I don't want to... It's actually cleared up a little bit. A little bit. Am I supposed to run her over? All right, I can't play this. <laughs> um, 007 Nightfire. Of course, riding the popularity of GoldenEye on the GameCube, a GameCube, the Nintendo 64. GoldenEye was a revolutionary first-person shooter when it came to console first-person shooters. Um, one of the first ones that weren't Bond. Doom James Bond. clones that gave the impression that first-person shooters were feasible on game consoles. And, uh, I mean, you started to see, like, uh, what was it? Uh, Perfect Dark and Time Splitters and stuff like that were made in the same vein, some of the same people involved. But I guess it sort of gave the James Bond games a little bit more credibility than they really deserved. In the years that followed, you saw more James Bond games that nobody really gives a shit about. Like this one, I don't remember this at all. Was there even a movie called Nightfire? 
Do you see they have Pierce Brosnan here, though? They got his likeness, which must have been expensive. We're in kind of a bit of a weird time in first-person shooters and video games where the impact of Halo and the impact of Call of Duty and Battlefield had yet to materialize. So you had first-person shooters that had moved on from the Doom clone era or like uh, Duke Nukem or No One Lives Forever. And it was being more influenced by what you had seen in GoldenEye or Half-Life. So you had this kind of weird, like, trying to trying to be Half-Life or trying to be GoldenEye. And, it, you know, it, it hadn't, like... For, the first-person shooter genre has really hit its pinnacle 10, 15 years ago. And since then, it's more or less plateaued in terms of development like that. But this was during an era where there was, like, fairly rapid development. So first-person shooters of this era aged horribly. Speaking of Grand Theft Auto, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, one of the games that I was the most excited about. I, was, I loved Grand Theft Auto 3, even though it was frustrating as fuck to play. But Vice City was so much better because it had the 80s aesthetic, which I thought was just so damn charming. The soundtrack with the 80s music. <laughs> Love that. The, um, the settings, the characters, the fact that Tommy was, a, was not a mute character, unlike the guy in GTA 3, who had his own attitude and all of that. Just made the game so much better. Plus, there was more details. The game looked a little bit better, too. Had the motorcycles, had airplanes, had all of that. Of course, it's got the more stylized design than the getaway. Uh, that we see, that we played a few minutes ago. But it, it arguably ages better, because it wasn't trying to look realistic. Game comes out, I buy it, love it. San Andreas comes out, technically a better game. But by the time it had come out, I had burned out on Vice City and GTA 3. And I kind of didn't spend a lot of time with it. Tribes Aerial Assault. Tribes is one of the games for PC that had come out. Like, like I, I talked a minute ago about how first-person shooters were very influenced by first Doom and then GoldenEye on the N64. Well, first-person shooters on PC took a very different way, took a very different turn, because they were more influenced by Unreal and by Quake. And you had another game series that has sort of died off, nobody really talks about it anymore, but Tribes was a competitive first-person shooter that had its own charm and had its own uh, like value and all that kind of stuff that you just didn't see on game consoles. So I, I have a feeling that Tribes was supposed to be a big deal on PlayStation 2. I don't know if it ever was. Because it may have been something that was like better suited for PC. Eventually, though, Halo sort of revolutionized, in a way, the console first-person shooter market. And Call of Duty revolutionized the PC first-person shooter market, which then transferred the consoles. So yeah, it's, we're in a very different place than Tribes is a big deal. I think we already saw this video. All right, so an hour and five minutes, and we still have all of this other shit, which... I will get to in another episode. So thanks for watching. When we get back, we will go into all these other features. <laughs>